Coming up on the paper talk today, Sir Jim Ratcliffe has been visiting and chatting to the staff at Manchester United Football Club. It looks like he's had positive talks, not just with all the staff, he did a bit of a Q&A, but also with the manager as well. The manager says that they've had positive talks. So we'll be looking at that. We'll also be looking at Jaden Sancho. I'll just let you know on, on that front as well. Jaden Sancho, it looks like he's on the verge of going to Dortmund. Maurizio Romano tweeted about that. But there's other deals we need to look at. What is going on with Andy Marshall? What is going on with Aaron Wambasaka? What is going on with Vitzel Lindelof? What is going on with Rafael Varane? How far away from starting from Manchester United, Alessandro Martinez and Casemiro? Let's get into it all. Jay here from Stratford Paddock, this is the Paper Talk. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford and it's a little bit cold, so make sure you've got your packers on. Loads of stories to get through, so we'll crack on this morning. Uh, first of all, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, he was here yesterday. He's been meeting with staff and he gave a bit of a talk. And it sounds like it was a pretty positive one. The Athletic have run an article on it and they said that Stafford praised him for his, his honesty and his straight-talking approach. He also said that he isn't looking to make money out of his investment in Manchester United. He's obviously bought 25% of the club. He's not looking to make money from that minority investment, according to what he said. Anyway, he's just looking to get Manchester United back to the very top. Now, he's making the right noises, and that's what we want to hear. And it, there's a the case to be argued that it does make sense if he's not looking to make money, that you know, buying 25% and putting up three or investing 300 million or whatever it is towards the training ground. That sounds like someone, okay, who is willing to put his money where his mouth is rather than just trying as the Glazers often do or have always done to just take money out of the club. But we'll wait and see what happens. It just sounds like it was a real positive approach. Talking of positive approaches, Eric Senag also said he'd had positive talks with the, man, uh, the manager. No, he's the manager with the new part owner. He said that they spoke for, I think, hours and hours, he said. And he said that it was, uh, you know, they're on the same page on a lot of issues. So he said those talks were positive, which is what you want to hear. We were chatting about this yesterday on Off The Bar with myself, Joe, Maka and Housen. And there were reports that there's going to be a revamp and a restructure and a different approach to transfers. And that could affect how the new part owner or new regime want to see Eric Ten Hag handling transfers. He might not have as much of an involvement as he has had in the past. And he wasn't keen on that so we'll have to see what pans out here what how it all works out because at the moment it seems like Eric Tanag has almost had a free reign with transfers you look at all the targets he's got they seem to be his targets and we spent a lot of money on some of those targets is that going to be the case moving forward the sort of the the reports we keep hearing are that we're going to have a different approach that the likes of um, Dave Brailsford obviously overseeing things then maybe something someone like sorry Paul Mitchell or Jean-Claude Blanc being involved and other people as well Dan Ashworth of course who I mentioned I think it was yesterday I said he could be coming over from Newcastle in a sporting director role so it looks like there could be a revamp it looks like the manager may have a different influence on transfers but I would expect him to be able to at least veto certain transfers to say, look, if you buy him, I ain't going to play him, so there's no point in buying him. So we'll see what's going on in the future. But at the moment, it looks like everyone's kind of on the same page and it's all sunshine and rainbows between Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the staff, and, of course, the manager. And we know that can change, but we'll, we'll, we'll just see how it goes for the time being. Um, if we're going to carry on being positive, uh, Lissandro Martinez and Casemiro have been on the grass. They're not smoking weed, but they've been on the grass training. So hopefully they can be back soon. We have missed them, especially Martinez. Such a huge player for Manchester United. I don't need to tell you guys how much we've missed him. He could be back in a Manchester United shirt very, very soon. And that's what we all love to see. Also on the defender front, Victor Lindelof and Aaron Rambasaka have all been triggered with their one-year extension, as well as Hannibal Medjbre. Those three players getting a one-year extension on their deals makes sense for me. I know Lindelof is one that a few people go, he's not good enough, he's not up to standard. He's probably 4 4 fifth choice. And for a 4 4 fifth choice centre-back, which you do need, you need someone who can, you know, you need at least four or five centre-backs at your disposal. He's probably right for that role. He's probably just about the level you need because you're not going to go out and get, I know you might go, well, Jay, City have like four mint centre-backs. Well, OK, they're a bit of an exception to the rule. Most clubs have two or three top-level centre-backs and then most top clubs, I'm, I'm, I mean, and then four or five who are decent or good, not quite at the sort of title winning level that you need. So, Vince Lindelof signing deal makes sense. Aaron Wambasaka, I think, has been a very good player since he arrived at Manchester United. Had a few dips, but on the whole, I think he's been a good signing, I'll be honest with you. Makes sense for that one. And obviously, Hannibal Medjubre, young talent. We know he can be a bit erratic, but giving him one year extension, it's a bit of a no-brainer. What isn't a no-brainer, and what has sent the internet into a bit of a meltdown, 
is the idea that Andy Martial could be getting a one-year extension. Now, Eric Tenag spoke about the fact that the club were in talks with Rafael Varane and Aaron Wan Bissaka, Aaron Andy Martial, when it came to his contracts. Now, that doesn't mean for definite that he's going to get this one-year extension. Although some people are looking at, well, what are they talking about then? But it is a little bit concerning for a lot of fans, and I, I'm kind of in the same boat, the idea that Martial is going to be here for another year because I think it comes to the end of the road of Andy Martial. There was a time when I absolutely loved him. You go back to his debut, the game against Everton, the time under Ollie where he scored 23 goals in a season. But for like the last four, three or four seasons, or three seasons, he hasn't done anything, really. He had little bits and moments and goals here and there, but he gets injured a lot. It just isn't reliable, and I just don't think you should be giving him an extension. Now, like I said, that sent the sort of the internet into a meltdown. I can't believe this is going on. Outrage, outrage, outrage. However, Rob Dawson for ESPN, I think he's done an article saying that sources indicate that it might not be getting an extension. Uh, there was an article or a post from David Ornstein about a month ago where he said he understood that Andy Marshall would not be getting an extension. And Talk Sport, have a much where you want to put behind them, are running with the story that he won't be getting an extension. So I think some of the outrage might be misplaced. We'll wait and see what's going on because there is still that little niggling feeling, well, hang on a minute, what are they talking about? And also, this is Manchester United. So giving players contract extensions who are surplus to requirements, it's kind of what we do. So I wouldn't be too surprised if he did. But at the moment, the, 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 I'd say it's veering towards or edging towards the idea that he won't. Get involved in the comments in the chat. Let me know what you think about Andy Marshall. Should he be given a new deal? Do you think he will be given a new deal? Do you worry about the manager's words if you don't want to see him being given a new deal? Or do you think he's just going to be released on a free, as a free transfer in the summer? I don't even think that... I think there'll be some clubs in for him because he's still a talent, but I don't think like loads of clubs will be lining up for Andy Marshall. He went on loan to Sevilla, didn't he? And he didn't really do anything. And like I said, he's not really done much in a United shirt over the last couple of seasons, if not a bit longer. Um on potential incomings as well. There's a kid from Girona there setting La Liga alight. Miguel Gutierrez, I think he's a left back. United have been linked with him. Now, there is a bit of a fly in the ointment in the sense that City, I think, are also monitoring him. I saw this in the, the Daily Mail. I think it's come via the Sun. Hashtag don't buy the Sun. Now, City, uh, like the City group, Girona is one of their clubs. So if they want him, they're going to get him, aren't they? Let's have it right. They're not, he's not going to go see United. Um, it does seem a little bit odd that we're looking at other full-backs or left-backs when we've just let Sergio Regulon go. If it's going to be a January signing, I don't think it will be. One to keep an eye on. If anything happens with that one, we will keep you posted, as always. Just on going backwards, if I can do, on the Sir Jim Ratcliffe front, that article in The Athletic was talking about Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his talk with the staff. There was also another article in The Athletic speaking about, I know you saw it by Laurie Whitwell, speaking about what's going on sort of over the last almost 10 years with the Glazers and Woodward and Murta and all the rest of it. We are going to be having Laurie late on later on today at the Brew. Now, I know we always chat waffle on the Brew, but we will chat to him about that article as well. So if you're not doing, make sure you are subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on that. That's going to be at 4 o'clock later on today. We've also got a load of other videos coming up. We'll obviously have the preview for the Wigan game, big FA Cup game coming up. I spoke about yesterday how Andre Nana is going to be available for that one. And also the Spurs game, which seems a little bit odd when he's got the African combinations just 24 hours later. But hey-ho, this is where we're at. And he's United's first choice goalkeeper, so it's not exactly bad news. So... We'll have the preview up, we'll have the brew, we'll have all that other good stuff. So don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. I've been Jay Motty outside a very cold Old Trafford. Oh, my hands are cold. Thanks for watching.